Netflix is spending millions to remake the longest shonen anime in history. Why? Because they know what very few One Piece fans have accepted. One Piece has possibly the worst anime adaptation ever. Many of you already know how bad the pacing is, but what if I told you that's just the tip of the iceberg? I know, it may be hard to accept. After all, One Piece has been arguably the most successful of any anime over the past 20 years. Only, something is very wrong with One Piece for those over at Netflix. Toei Animation to be clear, I am not saying that One Piece is the worst anime ever. I'm a huge fan of One Piece. It is possibly the greatest story ever told, but a distinction needs to be made between the manga and how the anime has adapted that manga. I think One Piece can do so much better, and so does Netflix, and making a better One Piece can make Netflix a lot of money. One Piece has massive potential here in the West, especially after how many new fans the live action pulled in. Yet Netflix isn't happy with how many of these new fans started watching the anime. With the quality that Toei has produced One Piece, it's no surprise people who have never watched anime before are not interested. And that's a problem for Netflix. Compared to other anime, One Piece isn't as big in the West, but it can be. One Piece is the best-selling manga of all time. With an equally great as anime, Netflix plans to capitalize on their new live-action One Piece fans. How Toei stands in the way and why Netflix chose to reanimate a 1,000 episode series are questions that are going to be answered in this video. But first, we need to take a look at what exactly is at stake and how much money Netflix stands to gain with a successful remake. However, this is not going to be easy. The remake still has to compete not only with other modern anime like Jujutsu Kaisen, but against the original covering the exact same story. For Netflix to create something worthwhile seems impossible. But if you take a look into One Piece's movie sales within the US, this whole remake idea starts to look like one of the greatest financial decisions Netflix could ever make. As the number one selling manga of all time, it shouldn't come as a surprise how well One Piece Film Red did at the box office, becoming the number six highest grossing Japanese animated film of all time, even beating out Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. What does come as a surprise though, is when you take a look at the movie sales inside the US. Instead of Film Red making more money than Jujutsu Kaisen, like it did worldwide, it actually did worse, much worse. With nearly triple the sales of One Piece, clearly Jujutsu Kaisen is able to connect better with Western audiences, and that's a big deal. Over 20% of the sales for Jujutsu Kaisen were from the US, while for Film Red, the US barely made up 7% of its total sales. Which is strange considering as a movie, Film Red doesn't suffer from poor pacing. There is no pressure for Toei to pump out hollow content in order to meet weekly deadlines. For Netflix, this is bad news. The vast majority of its revenue comes from Western audiences, and ensuring that One Piece is an anime something their subscribers want to watch is more important than ever after the success of the live action. There are now an enormous number of viewers that are brand new to the world of One Piece which is exactly what Netflix wanted when they made the live action. Capturing this audience and turning them into anime fans is a great way to ensure Netflix's customers never run out of things to watch with how long One Piece is. Except, Netflix is missing over half of the anime on its platform. Ironically, if you were to go and watch One Piece on Netflix right now, after finishing the pre-time skip arcs and starting the next episode, you would be met with the newest arc, Egghead, skipping over 583 episodes. So why doesn't Netflix just get the rest of the anime for people to watch? Well, it's simply not worth it. After all, Netflix is a software company. They know exactly how many people started watching the anime after seeing the live action and exactly how many people gave up on the anime after not liking it. Even if One Piece had good pacing, Toei created so many issues that Netflix is left with no choice but to remake the longest shonen anime in history. That is, if they hope to capture the new fans created with the live action. So what is Toei doing that is making fans in the US stop watching? 
and don't let how beautiful Egghead and Wano look fool you. These are massive underlying issues with how Toei adapts One Piece that have actually gotten worse in the most recent arcs. Pacing is far from the only thing wrong with the anime. In fact, even Oda knows that something needs to change if One Piece is to reach its full potential. Here's what he had to say when the remake was first announced. This is a project to redesign the animation of One Piece as a modern image, in a different line from the series that has progressed with Toei for 25 years. I hope to see you with a new feeling the release is still far away and it is a long project that will take longer to finish. But with the new friends, Wit Studio and Netflix and fans from all over the world, we can deliver it to the new generation. So we will do our best with the all One Piece team. I'll do it. Not only does this clear any doubts of whether Oda is involved or who this project is for, because like Oda said, this is for the new generation. With the success of the live action, there are many new fans who have previously never seen an anime. The goal is to create One Piece for these new fans, which may lead you to think this is about recreating old episodes from the late 90s like how other anime have done such as Hunter x Hunter. But no, the dated and old look of East Blue and other early arcs is nothing compared to Toei's mistakes that have actually gotten worse with each and every arc. Which is why even Oda specifically said that this project is in a different line from how the series progressed with Toei. But to give credit where credit is due, it is seriously impressive how Toei has managed to give us a new episode of One Piece every week for the past 20 years. They are also responsible for adapting some of the greatest moments in One Piece and making the recent arcs like Wano visually stunning. But regardless, as the saying goes, at the end of the day, if you put lipstick on a pig, it is still a pig. No matter how visually beautiful they make Egghead, Toei is still hurting One Piece in so many other ways. I don't think weekly episodes should come at the cost of terrible pacing and the long list of other issues that we're about to get into. I would much rather wait for seasonal One Piece if it meant it was produced as good as Jujutsu Kaisen. Speaking of production, now is the perfect time to tell you about who Wit Studio is and what they have previously worked on. Wit Studio has most notably worked on the first season of Vinland Saga, Spy Family, and the early seasons of Attack on Titan. They did phenomenal jobs in all of these anime and are quite possibly the perfect studio to work on a One Piece remake. They do all of the things Toei gets wrong, but better especially with the biggest issue of the One Piece anime that is actually impossible to see, which we're gonna cover last. So be sure to stick till the end of the video, that way you know how much better this remake is going to be. With that being said, the first major thing Wit does better than Toei can be easily seen with their work on Spy Family. Spy Family isn't particularly crazy when it comes to their animations. In fact, the art style is fairly grounded. Aside from a few scenes that go all out for comedic purposes, Wit does a great job of making fight scenes exciting without the use of auras, perfect for the East Blue. But the most important thing Wit does differently from Toei is how they compose their fight scenes. Looking at Spy Family's manga side by side with the anime, you can see how the anime perfectly expresses the source material, yet at the same time fits in stuff that is not seen inside the manga. These additions only elevate how amazing the scene is. We never see the swordsman draw his blade or your switch from an attack to a sprint in the manga but it fits perfectly because that is exactly how you would expect it to happen in between the panels. Wit takes their time and seamlessly composes how they go from one panel to the next, so we as viewers get to be engaged the entire time. Toei, on the other hand, does not do this. They do not create new scenes that blend panels together. Instead, they either mash all of the frames together so it's literally basically just a PowerPoint, or they drag out each individual panel for as long as possible. Even in the most recent episodes where Blackbeard fights Law, this single panel of the Harp Pirates getting hit with a shockwave from Blackbeard was struck out for 50 seconds, nearly a full minute of basically nothing happening except the ground shaking. For comparison, the Spy Family fight was 23 frames inside the manga and about 2 minutes in the anime. Whereas these 24 frames from the One Piece scene were 4 and a half minutes. So there's the first thing Wit does so much better than Toei. They take their time and decide how they go from one panel to the next, which directly contributes to the next major problem, the pacing. Now I know I said pacing wasn't the main issue that Netflix has with Toei, but regardless, it is still a massive problem, and I'm not here to beat a dead horse or waste anyone's time. Toei making One Piece episodes longer than they need to be is well talked about throughout the community. 
I even made an entire video covering it down in the description. So go check it out if you want to know exactly everything wrong with the pacing in One Piece. But even if the pacing was not an issue, Netflix would still have to remake One Piece for the following reasons. Because for whatever reason, whenever One Piece enters a new arc, Toei holds meetings that go a little like this. Good morning, everyone. I have gathered the best minds here at Toei Animation inside this meeting. We need to figure out how we can make One Piece more popular for the egghead arc. Oh, how about we make Nami have bigger boobs? No, we've already done that like six times. We can't keep doing this. Oh, I got it. Let's make Bonnie have an egregiously large chest. No, dude. She's like 12 or something. I don't know. Oh, how about what if we did both? Brilliant. I mean, sure, you could argue some of the blame lies with Oda, with how he draws the characters inside the manga. But what you cannot deny is how Toei takes his drawings and exaggerates them even further. Like someone creating a character in a video game where they turn the chest size all the way to the max. Except, when people do it in video games, it's because they want their character to look stupid. Toei, for some reason, thinks it makes their female characters look better. It doesn't. All it does is take away from who they are as a character. Instead of using the female cast to show how strong they are, Toei uses each and every opportunity to make everything about them unrealistic. I mean, they even pimped out Law, taking the one single panel of him as a woman and creating a two minute montage of fan service. Needless to say, for the many new fans the live action created, including stuff like this inside the anime hurts Netflix. Families are not going to want their kids watching a show like this. But even if their families let them watch it, there's still one more massive problem that you can't see, but makes the anime so, so hard to watch. And in fact, it's only gotten worse now that the art style has actually gotten pretty good. It's like a bodybuilder who only trains upper body and skips every leg day, leaving their scrawny chicken legs in the dust. One Piece has left their scrawny sound design in the dust. This never seemed like an issue before with the older arcs, but now that the art style has taken a big step up, it just feels weird that the audio has not, which is truly unfortunate because sound design is like the secret sauce of anime. It's easily forgotten about when everything else is done right, but when it's done wrong, it sticks out. Jujutsu Kaisen has become one of my all-time favorite anime for possibly having the best sound design in any anime I've ever seen or heard. But just imagine, if One Piece sounded like Jujutsu Kaisen, Wait, sorry, that was the wrong video, but for a grasp of what I'm really talking about, I want you to take a look at this video that Vahara made himself. Why does anime sound like this? If it could sound like this. Yeah, that is just from one guy. Ohara made a couple more videos like this one that will be down in the description if you want to see more examples, but if an entire studio like 2A spent some resources into their sound design, watching One Piece would be an entirely different anime. Instead, we're stuck with listening to this for several minutes straight in the newest episode. If you want to know exactly why One Piece has terrible pacing and how adding filler would improve it, go check out my video right here. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and yeah, bye.